So, yeah, this is what we're Yeah. 
Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, our second Sunset Serenades for the season. So it's so lovely to see all your faces and to be back in this beautiful spot. Um, as always, there's some uh, quick little announcements I need to make. A uh, couple of hot tips here in Heisler Park. A wonderful uh, international artist named Ellen Reed has done a sound walk that she, she's a musician and she created music uh, that you can find on your phone via an app. And if you need any further instruction, go to the city website. It's well worth a listen and it's custom made music as you're walking through Heisler Park. It's, it's quite unique, quite a wonderful art piece that she's done for us. Um, also coming up is the Circus Bella at uh, Bluebird Park. And that is on uh, September 25th from at one and at three. So two performances. And that'll be a lot of fun. Bring the kids or the grandkids or yourselves and your, your people. Um, it's gonna be fun. And all information uh, about Arts Commission projects are on the city website and the cultural arts page. So I, I uh, urge you to check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. And I want to thank the Arts Commission, many of them are, who are here tonight. Woo! I would like to thank, uh, yay. <laughs> I would like to thank Jason Fetty for all of his expertise and amazing skills. I would like to thank the City of Laguna Beach and lodging establishments, and I would like to thank the West Coast Wind Quintet. So, thank you. Right, hello, hello. I'm a little bit on the shorter side, so. <laughs> Um, we're so happy to be here today um, to play for you. We, uh, we, um, we've been working really hard um, on this program. And so um, I'd just like to take a little bit of time to introduce all of us. We are, as a collective, the West Coast Wind Quintet. But over here on flute, we have Shandon Kendrola. On oboe, we have Kathy O. Behind me. On French horn is Kristen Morrison. On clarinet we have Maggie. <laughs> Maggie Morrison. Sorry, there's a lot of markers that I know. <laughs> and then um, I am the bassoonist, Elizabeth Atwater. Um, for us, for you today, we have, um, it's a two-parter. In the first half, we're actually going to do a composer feature of Ron Levy's works. And we are so thrilled to have him with us today to kind of walk us through his pieces. We've been working really hard on them. And, um, yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. And thanks to all of you for playing my music. And thanks to all of you for being here. So I'm going to just say a couple of words, keep it short, about the pieces you're about to hear. Uh, the first one is called Odd Beethoven. It's a set of five pieces. And um, the first of the five is called Crooked Lisa. Now each of these titles is significant. Uh, it's uh, Crooked Lisa is based on, you'll recognize it, but um, it goes crooked in this version. Uh, the next one is called Shrimp Salad. Is that right? Yeah. Shrimp Salad. Yeah, I have no idea where I came up with that title. Uh, the third one is called Hero, like the sandwich. And the, uh, the, should I tell the story? Okay, so it's, it's based on the third, they're all based on Beethoven. Third Symphony, the Eroica, dedicated to the hero of the day, Napoleon Bonaparte, except at the last minute when Napoleon decided he was gonna make himself emperor, Beethoven scratched his name out, just called it the Eroica, the hero. Symphony for a hero. So I changed it to the sandwich. <laughs> the, uh, the fourth one has had three titles so far. It started out as El Pastor, like the taco. And uh, 
it, 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 that's because it's based on the pastoral, pastoral symphony, the number six. Then it got changed to Sixth Sense, like you got Sixth Sense you could loan me, and now it's Sixth Sense, like the movie. That's what happened. <laughs> and the last one, number nine. Now, obviously based on the Ninth Symphony, there's some other cute quotes in there. There'll be a quiz afterwards, another one. And number nine for Beatles fans, number nine, number nine, number nine. So those are the titles. Anyhow, I'm going to go there. They're going to play. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
You aren't they great? Did you get some of the quotes? <laughs> By the way, I'm thinking of the whole series of there. I write other music that's also kind of dumb, funny. You know what I mean? Um, the, the overall thing, fractured classics. Oh, fractured classics. Remember the old fractured fables? So the next piece is called Eros, it's spelled A-E-R-O-S. So, you know, don't get any ideas. And that actually was a piece I wrote for a contest, a, uh, a competition as it were. And, you know, sadly I didn't win the competition. But, 
because of that, it's never been played, making tonight the world premiere. And, uh, enjoy.
the last piece of mine that they're going to play, thank you, Pacific Wind Quartet, and thank you City of Laguna Beach for having us, and thank you Jason Fetty, thank you family, and you're all my new friends. Uh, this is called Six Pieces for Woodwind Quintet. It's six pieces for Woodwind Quintet. <laughs> it's actually the first piece I wrote for this ensemble. When I was when I started uh, UCLA, I was really into electronic music, and there's actually a, an old. If you get an old copy of the OC Register, I'm not going to tell you how old. Well, I'll tell you how old. Sometime in the late '70s, there's a picture of me sitting with a bunch of knobs at the uh, electronic music synthesizer at Orange Coast College. Look for it. <laughs> anyway, that was all I cared about, and I applied to UCLA because they had a bigger synthesizer. But the teacher said, no, 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 no. You're gonna write a woodwind quintet, and here's what they sound like. So we, uh, when I first heard that sound, I was like, ooh. And it changed, that changed everything. So this, uh, 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 they're talking a lot, right? Yeah, too much? Okay. You have a hook, right? You have the. Th so six pieces, Jump and Leap is number one. A ballerina looking for a melody. Number two is A Strange Meeting and it is Mozart Goes to the Movies. Number three is called Persistence but it was called Frustration. I think it's probably for the oboist actually true. Uh, a simple, annoying, repeated figure which repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. <laughs> Number four is Java Boo Boo. And um, I can't say anything else about that. No words. Chocolate Fingers, uh, it, it, the quiz, it's a lyric from a lyric of a song, pop song. Uh, and number six, Leaning Down, and it's kind of a hoedown, feature for the bassoon, and oh, a hoedown in classical pajamas. Okay, enjoy.
you so uh, the, you know they're gonna have a little break and I guess I'm gonna do a little stand-up <laughs> don't really have any material prepared how about q and I I was gonna ask you questions how's that wine <laughs> right on got any for me no I'm kidding I, I don't drink this stuff until after the show Thank you for laughing at my joke. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and transition into our second half of our program. We have uh, collected a series of composers for you that um, are reflective of seasonal soundscapes. The first one um, being a very popular um, famous piece from the 1700s, a crowd favorite since then, um, by Vivaldi, his little concerto grosso called The Seasons. And um, we are going to play for you one movement of spring. So here we are, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
has been getting shorter and shorter as the months have been progressing, so I don't want to uh, give you another show, <laughs> so, okay. so, so I'm going to keep it up. Okay. All right, so uh, up next is a beautiful piece um, called <laughs> Three Summer Dances by Joseph Turin. Uh, he was born in 1947, and he's still alive. That's what's so great about our program now to the end, is that all the composers are alive. So on social media, I just like tag them all, and it's so cool to just get their feedback and communicate. That's what's so great about new music, you know? Um, so he's a composer, orchestrator, conductor, pianist, teacher. Um, some of his commissions include working with the New York Phil, hello, <laughs> with uh, orchestra concertos, with uh, very famous flutist Carol Winnick. Um, he's a countless chamber ensemble um, works for many professional groups and film credits, including Nightmare on Elm Street. This one isn't that creepy, though, with this piece, okay? <laughs> <laughs> three summer dances. Um, we have three movements, right? Three. Okay, first movement is uh, frolic. It's very light and energetic and punctuated by staccato figures, short rhythmic ideas. The second movement is intermezzo, uh, my favorite because there's a flu feature, and uh, there's a melodic gentle 6-8 feel, um, and very transparent. And then the third movement is rondo, um, where the main melody constantly returns. It's very bouncy, very summer-like. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this beautiful piece. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
for being here. It's really cool to see so many people coming out for chamber music. It's kind of rare. Yeah, yeah, good for you. You're here. And this is chamber music. We're being cultured. This is good. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Irony. Uh, it's okay. Um, enjoy the sunset. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're the West Coast Wind Quintet. And um, we, our first half, as you know, we've been playing the pieces of Ron Levy. And yeah, go Ron, one more time. Great, yay. And uh, the second half, we have a theme of seasons. So the piece we're about to play for you right now is uh, called Winter Music. And it's written by a guy named Adam Schoenberg, who is not related to that other Schoenberg, but um, it's almost spelled the same. Adam is a graduate of Juilliard and Oberlin. And um, if you're into nerdy classical things, um, you may have heard of the Viennese School of Music with Mozart and Haydn and uh, Beethoven. Uh, there's technically also an Atlanta School of Music, um, and that's kind of been pushed by the Atlanta Symphony. And um, there are, there's a small cohort of contemporary composers that are really doing wonderful, tonal, um, accessible things. And Adam is absolutely in that category. Um, you'll you probably notice that some of the pieces of music that we play are um, kind of complicated uh, with time signatures. Rhythmically, we're all over the place, and as you can see, we do not have a conductor, and that's kind of the beauty of chamber music: is um, you communicate with each other. So you'll, you're going to see us move a lot more um, than you would if you're going to the symphony, and uh, that's on purpose. That's so we know where we are. We're using our body language and everything to communicate. So this next piece is no exception by Adam Schoenberg, and um, I would listen for the beautiful textures that are kind of passed around between each of the instruments. And um, there's this engine of, um, well, technically they're eighth notes, and they just kind of drive in this almost cattywampus or crooked way um, the piece forward. So again, this is Winter by Adam Schoenberg. Thank you so much for having us.
living composer is Eric Iwazan. Eric was born in Cleveland, Ohio back in 1954 and it sort of pains me as a gal born and raised in Pittsburgh. We always called Cleveland the mistake on the lake but no longer can I do that because this man is an esteemed, esteemed composer. Um, he started his education, uh, music education in at Eastman and he ended up at Juilliard where he completed his studies with his doctorate in composition. Um, he studied with uh, such composers, notable composers as um, Milton Babbitt and Gunther Schuller. Um, 
um, let me get my notes here. Eric would describe his music as unabashedly tonal with sprinkles and touches of many varied styles. His personal credo was to listen to all types of music and keep an open mind about it. Um, he had his, as everybody did in the 70s, you had to write in atonal styles and that never really left him. Um, so you can hear that throughout his music, but it always has a center that you can latch on to as well. He would also label his music as neo-romantic, neo-impressionist. Um, he says, let's see, uh, he says he likes to connect with his audience on an emotional level. Um, his teacher, Gunther Schuller, likened composition to like the compositional elements to your burners on your stove. You have your burners on your set to make your dinner, but if some of the burners aren't quite working right, you're not gonna get all the items cooked the way you need to make your dinner perfect. So he says rhythm, melody, harmony, all need to be present to make it listenable, to make the audience like it. He also loves when musician, musicians like to play his music, which we love to play this piece. It's great. Now onto the piece itself. Um, he says that until he was 40 years old, he never went any further west than Chicago. He never knew there was anything further than that when he went to Aspen and he gathered in this scenery. So this is what his impressions of when he went to Aspen. Um, the first movement is called um, Maroon Creek. Am I right? Right. Okay. And so this is where he says he describes the rushing rapids. It's all about the energy and the power of the water. And you'll be able to hear this when we start playing. So this is the first movement.
So the second movement is slower. It's called Snowmass Lake Columbines. And I didn't know that columbines are a beautiful, delicate little flower. They're purple and white, and they grow in this immense valley uh, in between the, the, the majestic mountains. Um, and in, in the Ute people's uh, preference, they called the mountains surrounding this valley uh, their word for cold woman because the, the mountains were always shrouded in clouds and would also be believed to bring about bad weather. Um, but what Iwazan saw was the majestic valleys and the delicate flowers that thrived in this valley. Uh, and so this is the second movement the Columbines Snow Mass Lake.
Okay, and our last movement of the evening is called Buckskin Pass. Um, in this, he wants, he wants us to imagine the grandeur of the mountains with a spectrum of colors, the blues, the purples, the greens, the yellows, the reds, and the beautiful pasture lands. Um, uh, the Buckskin Pass itself spans between the Minnehaha Gulch and the Snowmass Creek, so it, builds, it uh, brings back themes from both of these, the uh, earlier movements, um, and he, uh, let's see, and he, and he says, um, in, in particular, imagine the distinctive red hues of the elk range when you're listening to this. So you'll hear all these, these hues and colors and grandeur in this last movement. I just came for the second movement. Who is the composer? Uh, Eric Iwazen. 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 Yeah. American composer? American composer. Thank you very much. You bet. Great. Wonderful music. The Cleveland. <laughs> Thank uh you. -huh. 
Stand up, stand up for me. Very good. Thank you once again. We are the West Coast Wind Quintet. A very special thanks to Ron Levy for featuring, letting us feature his pieces and for coming out. Thank you all for coming out. We had a wonderful time today, and I hope that you will go home singing all of these songs. <laughs> Behind you is the crescent moon. Oh, look, look at, that. at that. What does that mean? It means that you're a creature of the moon. I don't know what it means, but it's cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Just go with it. <laughs> look at that. We'll see um, Venus in a few minutes too. As soon as that, there's some, there's, there's some, some pelicans. We love pelicans. Big fan. You're right. <laughs> 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 